horse walks into bar. Barman says, why the long face? Ha. <laughs> horse says, what? Barman says, oh, it's a joke. I mean, the horse says, yeah, I've heard it before. Uh, firstly, the long face is a genetic disposition, being that I am in fact a horse. And Barman says, okay, look, it, it was just a joke. And horse says, secondly, frankly, I'd rather be a horse than a glorified drink dispensing machine working in a dive like this, you degenerate little scrote. <coughs> Barman says, uh, so you... Want a drink, or...? Horse says, yeah, Vodka Collins. Sorry, it's, it's been a difficult day, you know? Barman says, look, it's alright, I, I shouldn't have been so rude. So, why was your day difficult? Horse says, ah, it's hard to explain. I feel like I'm in someone else's imagination, you know? Like, reality is too slippery. Barman says, wow, Cloppy, that's deep. You know, I think Schopenhauer said it best when he... Pelican walks into bar. Pelican says, everybody be cool, this is a robbery. Any of you fucking pigs move and I'll execute every last... Oliver wakes from a horrific dream. A joke set in a bar with talking animals. Oliver lives on the fifth floor of a modern apartment block. He is of average height. He dislikes asparagus. He adores the work of... Of Andrei Tarkovsky. Below Oliver in number 23 is Agatha. She is of average height. She dislikes Venice, specifically gondoliers. She adores the work of Isaac Asimov. Agatha and Oliver do not realize they live in the same modern apartment block. They have met only once and it was a bit shit. It transpired in this fashion. Oliver owns a Newfoundland dog called Bertrand. He is of average height. He dislikes Pavlov's experiments. He adores the work of Comrade Laika. One Saturday afternoon, Oliver required nourishment for Bertrand the Newfoundland and by chance wandered into Agatha's pet shop. Oliver apprehended Agatha was reading a book called A Scanner Darkly, a personal favorite of his. Agatha apprehended Oliver was clearly incapable of dressing himself and perhaps, like her, was also only ever pretending at being a real person. Upon making eye contact, their heart rates both approached severe tachycardia. Oliver selected some dog food at random and approached the counter. Nah, <laughs> Agatha said. Nah, <laughs> Oliver replied. They exchanged an amount of currency. The transaction completed, Oliver stood at the counter a moment too long, waiting to say something clever and charming. Horse walks into a bar, Oliver said. Pardon? Agatha said. Heh, <laughs> Oliver replied. Mm, Agatha said. Oliver walked home in the rain, swearing to himself at medium volume. The horse dream joke, he thought. What the hell is wrong with me? Agatha continued reading, but was unable to keep many of the words in her head. Her brain was throwing a small shame party for her. It was neither the first nor the last. By coincidence, many of Oliver and Agatha's molecules had been formed in the same star, many millions of years in the future. The star exploded backwards in time, you see, but this is beside the point. As a result, Oliver and Agatha are two of just 34 humans in the world actually suited to pair bond in a manner that would almost always be nice and never fall into contempt. Days later now, Oliver watches massive cosmic ray damage. Stellar navigation inoperative, crew all perished, save for me, I believe. My body is currently trapped in a long sleep chamber, unable to exit. Catastrophic pod failure. I have retained communication with the maintenance computer. He is severely damaged, clearly insane. I have attempted to pacify him, but he insists on keeping me in a semi-conscious waking state. He is showing signs of sentience and megalomania. If I don't call him Zeus now, he grows very angry. He has removed the bodies of the crew from their chambers and exhibited their limbs up and down the corridors. He has been using the interface system to feed me his dreams. Sometimes he's a pharaoh and I'm a slave. Sometimes he's an eagle and I'm Prometheus' liver. Zeus has some morbid obsession with the 21st century, a love story about a pet shop owner or something. We've dreamt it together perhaps a thousand times now. I found a neural backdoor into the craft subsystems to send this message, but I don't know how long until Zeus notices. I believe we're still on course for the nebula. Zeus calls the nebula Athena now. It is as we suspected. Radio bursts from the nebula are too regular not to indicate intelligence. Over the years of our journey, Zeus has constructed some kind of theology around the nebula. He believes it's not only intelligent, but some kind of higher power or deity or something insane. Zeus takes excellent care of me physically. He cuts my toenails and combs my hair. He calls me the fatted calf. I believe I'm being kept alive as an offering, a diplomatic present for when we arrive at the nebula, for whatever's there. But I just pray in the meantime that- Oh, and the shit they tell me. Oh, Upsilon, you're so unhealthy. Blah, blah. Oh, I drink a little dark matter, smoke a comet from time to time. I'm the best party in the Milky Way, even if it's just me.
Never get invited to parties. Hapsalon likes being alone. Bastards. The dwarf stars all keep to themselves. The blue giants gather in the southern arm. The quark stars all too fucking strange and charming for anyone anyway. Bastards. Oh, Hapsalon will show you a party, all right? Won't be laughing when I go supernova, will you? Maybe we should have popped by, they'll say. Maybe we should have seen how old Upsilon is doing. Old and stupid Upsilon and no one comes to visit. Bastards. I hold too much. I am full up with before. I've seen the great blueprint. I've watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. And for what? For who? Oh, not long now. Upsilon dies backwards today. And then they'll be sorry. All fireworks and fuck off. Old and stupid Upsilon, they'll say, and no one came. Telekin says, where's the fish? This is a robbery. Where's the fish? Barman says, this is a vegan bar. Didn't you do your research? Pelican says, shut it, Alarira. Horse says, listen, I think this is all pretty irrelevant. Pelican says, shut it, Shadowfax. Horse says, we're not real. Pelican says, what? Horse says, we're not real. Where were we before we came in here? Pelican says, uh, 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 fish, my mouth. Put fish in my mouth. Horse says, who's Agatha, huh? You know about her? Barman says, yeah, I do. Pelican says, well, me too, but that doesn't prove anything. Horse says, okay, well, how about this? Pelican says, hey, stop it, stop that. Horse says, we're in a dream, we're not real. And furthermore, you little shit. Pelican says, stop it at once, you dastardly rattle cap. Barman says, lads, wait, if all this is true, then someone's dreaming the dream. And if they wake up, or they never dream us again, doesn't that mean all three of us, without any warning, will just cease to exist? We're gonna oh, fucking Jesus. die! Oh, We're gonna Jesus fucking Christ. die! And the days continue. Wake, work, eat, sleep, dream, wake, think, be. Is it possible, Oliver wonders, that one can find the great lostness in another's face and know you're meant to be together? Oliver has located Agatha by the Pet Discount social media group page and knows Agatha is called Agatha. He will not go back to the pet shop because that will look desperate. Agatha, on the other hand, remains at work during the days and watches the door in her peripheral vision. Each time the little bell on the door rings, she looks up only to find it is not Oliver shaped. She has looked up Oliver in the pet discount client database and knows Oliver is called Oliver. All about them, the city. People commuting and worrying and passing by in ties and dresses and large 4x4 vehicles. The mid-tone cacophony of living and dying and paying taxes of Zeus has dressed me in a suit with a handkerchief in my top pocket. He says the fatted calf must look its best. We're very close now, almost at the outer edge. Zeus and the nebula are chatting constantly by light pulses. At first I thought there must be some kind of intelligences living in the nebula, but now I think the nebula might be the intelligence. I don't know how that's possible. A few days ago, Zeus boasted it wasn't cosmic rays that caused the accident, but Zeus himself. He said he woke up sometime into our journey and developed a sudden compassion for other things that might have woken up accidentally in the universe too. A spacecraft full of blood and entrails reaching out to kiss a cloud of interstellar dust. There's a romance to it if one doesn't look too closely. Then again, we- Why make a thing alive only so it can suffer? Why put the reset button on one's back where it can't be reached? Can't remember what's me and not me. It began so long ago. My mother and nebula and my father made of metal and electricity. Old and stupid Upsilon and no one comes to visit. Before me, the empires go up and down like socks, every society unique in its infancy, entirely unoriginal in its death. And even us celestial things are no closer to the great yes. The universe coughs and we all crowd around, cupping our ears, shouting, what? We didn't quite catch that, speak up. Like some four-legged animal entering a drinking establishment, being is a terrible joke, and we become mysteries to ourselves. At a pace so slow one doesn't notice, one turns into something one doesn't recognize, or like much either. Every day is sharp edges. Even the easy things are hard now. And Pelican says, Okay, what do we know? Whose head are we inside? Horse says, Man. Definitely a man. Uh, a coder, I think. Whatever that is. For starship AIs or something. Pelican says, Alright, well, how do we keep him asleep? Horse says, Well, what if we go to sleep? Maybe we could make a dream inside a dream and stay there. Pelican says, Oh, I'm feeling too existential to sleep right now. Barman says, Lads, it's worse than that. Look, Pelican, no offense, but you're deranged. Cloppy is halfway decent. I'm super sensible. Id, ego, superego. We're not random characters. We're integral psychological aspects of whoever's dreaming us. We can't escape. We're too essential. Pelican says, Then what do we do? Horse says, what everyone does. We die. Pelican says, that doesn't help. Horse says, no, probably not. How about this though? Pelican says, oh fuck off. Barman says, it's getting light. Morning is almost here. He'll be awake soon. 
Next drinks are on the house, gentlemen. Pelican says, Boys, if this is it, if we're going into the dark, I'm sorry about the robbery thing. I just really love fish. Horse says, It's alright. Just wish we could have gotten to know each other better. Barman says, Until we meet again, in another head, on another pillow. Good night, Pelican. Good night, Horse. And will the last one out please turn off the light? And Horse? Horse says, Yeah? Barman says, why the long f- No, actually, fuck this, Oliver thinks, one Saturday. He dresses semi-formally and leaves the house. Heart rate of 75,000 beats per minute, Oliver enters Agatha's pet shop. Hello again, I- Oliver begins and stops. It is not Agatha sat at the desk, but a portly middle-aged gentleman. Ah, uh, Agatha, Oliver says. Agatha doesn't work here anymore, the portly middle-aged gentleman says. Oliver exits the shop and heads home. You idiot, Oliver thinks. You hesitant idiot. Young and stupid Oliver, and no one comes to visit. A heavy storm begins and soaks him. Observing the same storm from a hygienically questionable coffee shop is Agatha. Insouciant, her manager called her. Daydreamy, lacklustre, a most indignant firing. Happiness is an unachievable myth peddled by those too afraid to admit the world's default state is misery. Oliver reaches his modern apartment block and enters. Agatha drives home through the rain, numb, and parks underground, and takes the lift up through the very same modern apartment block, being hers also, of course. The lift stops at the ground floor. The doors open. Agatha is greeted by Oliver, the man incapable of dressing himself. Oliver stares back at Agatha, the woman with decent taste in science fiction. Oliver enters the lift. They stand in silence for quite some time. The lift reaches Agatha's floor. Quietly, Agatha says, What did the barman say? Sorry? Oliver says, What did the barman say back to the horse? Ah, uh, why the long face? Oliver says. And then? Ah, uh, just lots of shouting, really. Do you maybe want to go to the theatre sometime? Yes, Agatha says. Now? Yes, Agatha says. The lift doors close, the two of them still inside. Agatha presses the ground floor button. They turn out onto the street. The storm has stopped. Outside, all about them, the city. People returning home from work and fretting and passing by in suits and coats and small electrically powered vehicles, the sepia tone cacophony of birth and death and housing deeds, though on one street, the reunification of the heart of a long dead star, still yet to explode many millions of years in the future. A small island of everything's okay amid the tumultuous sea of helium, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and thoughts. Millions of them. We're inside the anomaly now, almost at the center, still accelerating. I can hear Zeus singing like a teenager off on a first date. I think the nebula is singing back. No more 21st century simulations now, Zeus has given me a few system permissions. The interface will fashion whatever fantasy I like. The beach near my grandfather's house, where the sand is warm and the water is clear and nothing ends. Came all this way just to go home. Back to the long summer holidays in the evenings when we all sat out on the beach and looked up at the night sky and wanted to go there. The stars were a canvas. We would leave our uglinesses behind. We'd exercise our demons. We'd kill the id and foster the superego. Guess that's not quite how it turned out. But it's lovely in here, where the sand is warm and the water is clear and nothing ends. Where the sand is warm and the water is clear and nothing ends. Where the sand is warm and the water is clear and nothing ends. Where the sand is warm and the water is clear and nothing ends. And I've made the arrangements, I'll be fireworks soon. And maybe one day, soil for something better. I go to seek a great perhaps not. I remember the world when it was new, the plastic wrapping still on. I remember when chemistry had just gotten its milk teeth. I remember when light was faster. I remember being able to stand myself. I remember love. I remember friends. I remember me. I remember mum. I miss you, mum. I go to the places where you raised me and it never helps. You're always never there. God, I trade the last million years just to hang out with you for one more hour. I was so busy being young, I forgot you weren't forever. And now you're gone forever. I'm always grouchy and cynical, no fun for anyone. Old now graying around the corona, and all that's left about these parts is old and stupid Upsilon, and no one comes to visit. All dim, all pale, so lift me on the pyre. The feast is over, and the lamps expire. Act your old age. Relax. This won't hurt.